gentlemen, welcome, welcome to the Ultimate Gaming Championship Finals right here in Gatura Village in Italy. My name is Total Biscuit and joined by the mighty Mr. D Apollo. And we are down to the final two. Can't wait for this to begin and we are going to have yeah. a sick, sick series. Has your obs versus clouds, titans in the arena. No question about that. They have fought all the way through. Cloud coming in from the winner's bracket after some sketchy play in the group stages. Really got back his momentum. Was going all the way. It was so good, so powerful. Hazel Orbs got knocked down quite early to the loser's bracket, but was able to uh, fight his way through that, recently defeating Star Eagle in a commanding performance, and now going into the finals with a best of five, and Cloud will go in with a one-game advantage. Yeah, and I'm um, just thinking about how Hazjobs and Cloud got here. Hazjobs got knocked down. Well, actually, um, Hazjobs beat Cloud in the group stage. Then they met again in the yep. double limb, uh -huh. and Cloud won and knocked him down. And now they will fight to the death yes. in the grand finals here. There will be blood, I promise you that. And if you're looking for some esports violence, ladies and gentlemen, this is the place to go. Italy versus Germany, grand finals, like Total Biscuit said, best mm. five. Has your one nil down from coming from the loser bracket. Yeah. And uh, the map, first map, is going to be Scrap Station. And then the loser will pick from the from the map pool that's left over, which is Shattered Temple, Tal's Rim, Shakiris, and Zelnaga Caverns. Uh -huh. And it's uh, promising to be. Pretty good matchup. Yeah, I am hyped for this one. I'm really, really looking forward to it. It's going to be absolutely fantastic. All the matches up until this point really have been enjoyable in their own way. Some of them absolutely blinding. If this one doesn't prove to be the culmination of all of that, I'll be very surprised. And the countdown has begun. We are here for this, and I am pretty excited. I cannot wait to get this underway. Thank you, Samsung and Razer. Stoomy.com for sponsoring this sick tournament. And of course, one only Sapphire, and here we go, folks. Loading screen right now. Can you feel the tension? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you to the UGC Grand Finals right here. I bring you Hazel Orbs in the one and only Red Trunks. He is playing Protoss right here on the Scrap Station versus his opponent Cloud. In the Blue Trunks, he is playing Terran. And Cloud has been on fire yesterday and today. Absolutely phenomenal play. Um, taking down everybody, even like I mentioned before, taking down Habs Jobs before with such confident style and play. No mistakes throughout. And uh, has Jobs also been playing very solid from the loser bracket. And I think that's a portrait of how this tournament has begun and started. I mean, they all had, you know, I was going to say jet lag, but they all had to travel here long distances. Has Jobs had an 11-hour drive. Cloud was just tired because he hadn't been sleeping for, for a couple of nights. But now both players are rested and uh, ready to begin this uh, pretty large engagement. Yeah, there is going to be a pretty large engagement, absolutely. Hazel Ops is going to, I think, honestly, Hazel Ops will try and grab that early victory just so he can get a little bit of a psychological edge. Because he's already going into this one game down since he came from the loser's bracket. It seems to be important for his psychology that he might try and grab that first game really early, maybe even aggressively. Yes, he would. And we have, have, we have seen some very uh, well-executed builds from Hazrobs, especially the way he took out uh, Goody, or not Goody down, should I say, yep. uh, into the loser bracket. Really nice play. Uh, and we've seen some long macro games also from him, so there's a lot of different options he can do, yep. depending on what he feels out in the game. And I wouldn't be surprised if Cloud decided to go uh, for kind of a fast expansion. A lot of Terran players have been falling into this. Uh, and it's been proven quite successful. Uh, as long as you know can identify what your opponent is doing uh, and pull the right amount of SCVs and defend well enough, then you should be able to go into the mid game with quite a good economy. Yeah, Cloud is known for fast expanding an awful lot. He is a very heavy economic player. He does have early game potential, certainly. I think maybe Hazel Ops is a little bit stronger in that regard, particularly due to his race choice. And uh, while Hazy Ops can easily fight in a long macro game, and he's very capable of it, I wouldn't want to go toe to toe with Cloud for a 30 minute match. It just doesn't sound like a very good idea. Yeah, I know. You can get up to, you know, 200 supply Terran, 3 3 bio army, and that is not nice, especially with a good vibe. Can count. It's very difficult to deal with once Terran gets up to that stage in the game. 
But on the other hand, Hazyobs has great force field placements, great decision making, and do not forget Total Biscuit, the way he uses DTs is amazing. Yes, yes, it is extremely brutal, although I've noticed over the course of this tournament that the tactics have adapted for Cloud, and he started to mix Ravens into his initial force, which is going to be very useful, although bear in mind that Hazyobs tends to favor Blink Stalkers, he can Blink in very fast, he can snipe off Ravens, and of course Ravens are a lot pricier than the Overseers that he was sniping off versus Delphi and the other Zerg players. So so that could be a little bit of a problem for him. However, Cloud will no doubt have some scans in reserve as he always does. And Cloud does have concussive shells oh, researching yeah. now with the Marauder. A factory placed here, a little bit hidden from any probes that try to come up, and he does decide to leave with the SCV, scouting SCV before the uh, before the stalker pops out. And Smart looks play. like yep. uh, the probe is moving down here. We'll have to see if he decides to put down an expansion. It very well looks like it. Traditional. From Hazyob's traditional style with his two-gate expo. And um, this factory is going to be placed down here out of sight range. Wow, okay. Possibly could see some Hellions being put down, and that could be quite detrimental to Hazyob's economy, especially if he doesn't scout it. Yeah, it's certainly a risk. We'll have to see what he decides to actually do with that one. Hazelwobs does not see that. In the meantime, a little bit of a first engagement going on right here. Two Marines and a Marauder versus that Stalker. That will go in favor of that. I believe they also took down a Zealot in the process. Keeping an eye on that one. This is going to be messy right here. If Hazelwobs is not able to scout that, he is currently expanding. He's not too worried. He thinks he's pretty damn secure. This is a very sneaky maneuver considering the map. And this could be potentially devastating for Hazelwobs. Yes, and Cloud is going to exit behind this and we do have oh, the one Hellion coming in here. There we go ladies and gentlemen it is a sneaky maneuver and Hazelwobs didn't see that one coming a mile away. Hellion right now in the mineral line looking for as much damage as possible micromanaging that Hellion extremely well. Takes one looks to take another now four kills for the Hellion this is devastating that's five looking for six as well it's a perfect map for this extremely well done Stalker drives him away six kills for free he might even oh he doesn't get away but still that is well worth it. Six probe kills scouts out the two gate is going to move down to the expansion and also see the Nexus there. And uh, he has done quite a large uh, economical uh, damage to his opponent. At the same time, Cloud does have his command center building in his base. 24 probes versus 26. Mm. Well, that was intriguing. We haven't seen Cloud pull that one out the entire tournament, and perhaps because he didn't want to show it. And I think this is just one of those maps that they can actually work. Because Scrap Station, you always have these close air positions right here. A factory in the corner, float over, place it over here. And of course, if you're lucky and your opponent doesn't see it, you can do massive damage. That's exactly what happened. Like three more gateways come down right here for Hazelwobs as he tries to recover economically. And he needs to get stuff sorted out immediately. And a he second Hellion here, actually, Total Biscuit, trying to be made. Does get scouted though, but the Hellion is very, very fast. I'm not sure if these Stalkers will be able to kill it as soon as it pops it's a out. Possibility it goes for it straight away. Cloud slips past the Stalkers, can't grab it. And however, here comes the interception. Hazelwobs with three centuries taking it out. Nicely done there by Hazelwobs with the interception right there. And uh, a force was moved out there to start harassment onto Hazelwobs, but he does scout exactly how many units there. A second Hellion in the making, most likely, well, he should cancel it, yes, and uh, will move the factory out. Uh, but has gained useful scouting information at the same time. We have five warp gates now being placed down for Hazuobs. And in the main base of Cloud, we have that early plus one attack and a second engineering base there so you go. early. That's what happens, folks. That is what he loves to do. He gets those upgrades rolling. And this is a brilliant time to do when you think about it because Hazelwobs does not have any cash to spare. He lost six probes. He then went on to build his expansion and three wall warp gates. So he's not going to be able to get that. He doesn't even have a forge down as far as I know. So I wouldn't be concerned about that at all. And that's going to be a critical advantage for Cloud. Cloud will look to try and delay this attack as much as possible, although he will have stim when this goes in. So I am not feeling it right now for Hazelwobs, although he does have a significant army supply advantage. Yeah, he definitely does, but I mean I mean, Cloud being so greedy with these double uh, engineering base so early on, he just doesn't actually have the amount of units out. And Hazyob's very aggressive mm. placing this forward pile on down. And now, actually, Cloud scouts a lot with the factory, seeing his units not there. And the bunker does finish just in time. Will he be able to hold on to this? Well, that's a good question. He may have to pull it. Wow, that is really incredibly cheeky right now. It's right there. He doesn't see it. It's actually in the gas right there. Second bunk going down immediately. Sniped off. And here we go. Hazel is pushing him with a superior force. Bunker's in there. There's the stiff. Bunker down to 25% HP. It will melt. It's completely gone. Guardian Shield ripping it up. And the SCV's being brought in to try and hold the line. And you know what? I don't know if he'll be able to hold this one. Hazel Wolves continues with the pressure right here. Cloud is melting. He needs way more forces in there to push up. GG, ladies and gentlemen. There 
there you go. And Hazelwogs with a comeback, an incredibly aggressive comeback. Cloudy feel being a little bit too greedy there.